What's going on everyone, Jared Star here. It seems like the term no friends in the industry may be one of the most realist and accurate terms in rap music. Because the way that I've seen Drake so isolated during this rap beef has truly shown me that Drake has had no real friends this entire time and they have finally just showed their hand. Now Drake aside, the game has just declared war on Rick Ross. Now a couple days ago, the game releases on Instagram saying, it be the fat niggas with the skinny legs always running their mouth. Alluding to how Rick Ross is really involving himself a lot in the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. Now, after Drake dropped push-ups and before Kendrick Lamar dropped Euphoria, Rick Ross would drop champagne moments and really trying to make this about him, right? It's about two goats going at it, but Ross wanted to, you know, come up with the BBL drizzy jokes, the cupcake drizzy jokes, and make it about him. So Game would chime in and say, look, bro, this ain't about you. Why are you talking about it? And it's clear as day that Ross and the game have always had static over the past couple years, but there's never been a real avenue or reason to beef or bring it up. But with all the smoke going on with all of the artists, now is the perfect time. You niggas don't want to eat? You niggas don't want to eat my slime? You niggas starving. <laughs> you niggas starving. <laughs> the gang committed character assassination against Ross. Like, I mean, it was ugly. The cover was a picture of a cartoon Ross in a police uniform with chicken, and he went at Ross in all the integrity and most morally compass way possible. He talked about Ross for being a fake gangster and how he proclaimed himself on the level of Big Meech and Larry Hoover. But that's not really true. Now, the biggest issue that he has with Ross is he was making fun of Drake for being a predator, saying that OVO Drizzy can't come to my car show because there's going to be kids there. But Ross has one of the most contradicting and compromising lyrics that I've ever heard in rap history. I put Molly in the champagne and she didn't even know it. I took her home for a good time and she didn't even know it. Like Ross, you can't be the person to talk about people being a predator, people being an apist when you're putting lyrics like that on wax. Like, where were your friends in the booth? when the song came on, right? You know, Rick Ross has always been someone who's been very much of a meme and a funny guy in the industry who always pokes jokes at people and takes light of the moment, but this is way more serious. The significance of the song Freeway's Revenge and the title actually digs an even deeper hole. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Rick Ross is actually cosplaying as a real drug dealer whose name was Freeway Rick Ross from South California in the 80s. He was a cocaine dealer in the 80s who, if you guys ever came across the show Snowfall, which is one of my favorite shows, Franklin Saint, the protagonist in the show, is the real Freeway Rick Ross, and Ross stole that name and was actually sued for him back in 2018, I believe, or 2012, and that situation got resolved. Ross's whole persona has been him getting money, living his luxurious life, having all these homes, having all these women, but if you ask me, Ross is one of the most miserable rappers I've ever seen in my life. You know, people who are happy don't need to tell the internet how happy they are and how much they're getting money, right? You look at Ross, it's always him and his, him and his cattle, him and his livestock, him with his watches, him around people who have chains that are just not as rich as him, like, He's that one person who he feels that he's around people that he's superior than because he's going to feel inferior, right? Rick Ross is getting humbled by the game. Now, the game references his life before fame and how he was a CEO saying, it's that time of month the game, get this pussy something to bleed on. Talking about a tampon, saying your baby mother told me that you like to get peed on. Now, the baby mother in question is obviously Tia Kemp. And Tia Kemp is this very bitter baby mother that Rick Ross has, who if you guys do remember, linked with 50 Cent at the height of the Rick Ross 50 Cent beef in 09, and 50 Cent was literally playing with Ross's children. Like, it was that bad. And then the game would say, you're a CEO, that's the last time you had keys on you. You know, keys is another form or word for cocaine. And then you say, we know how you treat gunplay like a peon. Now, Gunplay was a very close friend of Rick Ross, who's actually signed to Bayback Music Group. And about a couple months ago, like definitely last year for sure, he put out a GoFundMe for his daughter who was like newly born and had some heart issues. At the time, DJ Envy was going on Rick Ross, and Ross was calling Envy broke because he works a desk job, but you know Ross's whole stature and aura is I'm the biggest boss, and Envy would say, listen Ross, if you're so rich, if you're this flamboyant lifestyle, you're this luxurious lifestyle, why does your mans have a GoFundMe for his daughter? Why aren't you paying for that? You know, Gunplay felt the way about that, called Envy talking crazy, said he was going to slap him. Rick Ross responded saying, you know, Envy's jealous, da da da. And, but basically, what he was saying was true, though, right? Like, you proclaim to have all this money, you spend it on yourself, you live in this big major castle and, and the head of Buckhead Atlanta by yourself, no one's around you. It, and it's like, Rick Ross is really just someone who needs money to be happy, and it's very evident in all of his songs and all of his videos on the internet. The game would ironically call it Rick Ross for impersonating rappers and drug dealers. Under palm trees, you got them choppers that'll eat your flesh. The river cross know every bird gotta leave the next. Talking about obviously Freeway Ricky, how he stole his name from him. And then he said, you stole your name, I pulled your file. You looked that big and stole his style. Now this is something that I never really thought about. How he kind of does, I don't want to say he raps like Biggie, but he has like that deep voice mafia cadence. Like if you ever listen to Rick Ross rap on Lemon Pepper Freestyle, Mafia Music, any of his songs, he raps like you're a mob boss at the table 
and one of you guys is about to be killed. It's like Judas, who did you betray? It's like one of you guys will die tonight, who you guys betrayed, right? Like he has that mafia temple aura feel, and he emulates being a drug kingpin, which is working, you know, people believe him, but it's not true to himself. Rick Ross has been called many things, a liar, a fraud, an instigator, and depending on what situation you may look at, they're all kind of true because if you look at a situation with him and Vlad or him and 50, right, he got exposed for being a cop and he lied about it. He denied, 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 denied. But now you'll see him on like Logan Paul's podcast or like the Full Set Nelk Boys podcast, fully admitting like, yeah, I used to work there. It was only for a little bit. He would say, oh, you know, my big homie was caught up in some shit. So, you know, I had to do what was right. Like he has like the ultimate cop, but people just don't seem to care, right? And then he gonna put on this gangster persona of him being a crack cocaine dealer in the 80s. I don't think you guys understand the significance of who he portrayed to be. Like the person, Freeway Rick Ross from the 80s, right? He was responsible for selling drugs in South Central LA that funded the Nicaraguan War in like the late 80s. Like, like the reason why there's always drugs in all of South Central LA and other communities was predominantly from that person who was literally working with the government unknowingly. Like they were doing it through a local supply, a local, you know, white Fed agent in the town who was working off the books and he was moving some serious weight. And if you guys want more information, obviously you can go watch the show Snowfall, but you now I could keep it brief for you guys and let you guys know that he proclaimed to be someone who was literally supposed to be in jail for the rest of their life. You know, he got out on an appeal, I believe, uh, 10 or 10 or 15 years ago. He was in jail since like 89. Like someone who really did real dirt in the streets and is glorified. Like we know in hip hop, we always glorify the shooters, the killers, the junkies. Unfortunately, we glorify the things that go against, you know, the police and the laws because, you know, black folks are mistreated. But the thing is, Rick Ross is a fraud, point blank period. And instigated because he's in this Drake beef, not even really trying to like add anything extra. He's just trying to water down what's being said by Drake, throw some salt on the wound with the BBL allegations that, you know, we already saw Metro Boomer come out with a song called BBL Drizzy. And he's just, just being very extra and doing things that don't matter. It's like Drake is in a 20v1. The game is like, all right, let me pick up my control and hop on this because I've always had a bone to pick with Ross. Went at Ross, called him out for saying certain things. I put Molly in a champagne. Called him over being a fake, saying, I pulled your file, and we saw that you're a police officer, not a drug dealer. And he went at Ross in every way that was applicable, and the culture is behind the game. Looking at both situations, when you talk about Drake, it's Drake is the white boy, he's the BBL Drizzy, he's a cupcake. But looking at Ross, he's a CEO, he was a drug kingpin. Honestly, if you ask me, I feel like Drake is more authentic than Ross. And a lot of you guys may disagree because of the current conflict in the conflict of interest we have with the Drake Kendrick Lamar beef and that's just what's being exposed right but Ross faked his lifestyle he put it on wax he hired some goons to be in his video people have been rocking with him he's with the French Montana Diddy you know DJ Khaled crew so he's always going to be relevant in hip hop and no one's really you know ever checked his card or revoked his black card for the shit that he does then people seem to agree with so hip hop is in a very weird, weird space right now you know like the game is checking him and I feel like we're going to see way more beef. You know, Gunna just dropped something new. Future just dropped something new. And I heard that they were talking hella shit against each other on Twitter. So let's see what that's saying. Jared Star, subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.